heaven and earth will disappear, but my words remain forever. But no one knows the date now when the end will be, not even the angels. No, nor even God's Son. Only the Father knows. The world will be at ease, banquets and parties and weddings, just as it was in Noah's time before the sudden coming of the flood. People wouldn't believe what was going to happen until the flood actually arrived and took them all away. So shall my coming be. Two men will be working together in the fields, and one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be going about their household tasks, one will be taken, the other left. So be prepared, for you don't know what day your Lord is coming. Life was filled with oh, God's man, oh, man, oh, man. Where this, this whole lineage thing that I'm doing at the moment, the directions it's taking me in, I just can't even begin to, I can't even begin to explain it, like what, what, what it's, where it's taken me. I, I decided this morning to put the word Adam into the New Testament just to have a bit of a look at, 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 at what the word Adam means and, Oh man, the, the directions it's taken me in, it's just, I tried to do a video on it actually, and I just couldn't, I couldn't get it down. I couldn't get it down. So it's just so profound where it's taken me and there's connection there to the beasts and the fallen angels and the book of Jude. And it's just, it's just amazing where this has taken me. But what I thought I'd do on this video is I finished the... I finished my spreadsheet. Well, finished it for the moment. I dare say with these spreadsheets, I'm going to keep adding on to them as I go, as I find out new things. But I finished it with how I think it's finished at the moment for the period between uh, Adam, the creation of Adam. So from the creation of Adam to to the flood, I've, I've finished that lineage now. So what I've done is with Adam, because Adam's just so profound, what I've done is I've just put, I'll just put it in here. So the word Adam in the Old Testament means man, first man, a city in, 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 in Jordan Valley. And in the New Testament, it means the red earth, Adam, the first man, the parent, parent of the whole human family, the parent of the whole human family. Just, just bear that in mind when I get to Eve. Um, and then you can see all of these scriptures down here, Luke 3.38, Romans 5, Corinthians 5. I, I don't know, take a screenshot if you like and, and just go to those scriptures and, and just, oh man, you, 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 your head will spin when you see where it takes you. Hey, it will absolutely make your head spin. All right, so here is the spreadsheet now. So don't Try not to get too confused. Try not to just just turn off because you can see that it's confusing. It's not it's not really. So I'll I'll explain. So you can see the top line here. That's Adam, Eve, and then they begat Cain, and then Abel, and then Seth, and then Cain begat these, and then Lamech had those two wives, and begat those children. So when you come over to this side, you can see Abel. Uh, and then the, the third born was Seth and there's the lineage of Seth down there. So that's that's sort of what you're looking at just in a overall view. So we'll just go through the name. So so Adam means just what I what I just said. Um, and, and Eve means life or living. And in the New Testament, she means mother, mother of all, all living. And if we go back to if we go back to Adam, Adam in the New Testament means the parent of the whole human family. So you can see Eve means in the New Testament the mother of all living. So it's it's interesting, isn't it? And the 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 language, uh, the just the, the definitions are slightly different, slightly different in the New Testament to what they are in the Old. But in any case, we'll go to Cain. So Cain means a Kenite, Smiths, an area between southern Palestine and the mountains of Sinai. I find all that really interesting because the name, the meaning of the name Cain is, is scriptures that we see after Genesis 4. So I just find that fascinating. And then we come to Enoch. So Enoch dedicated uh, the, the city which Cain built after he named after his son Enoch. And then we come down to Irad and Irad means fleet. Mahujal, smitten by God. Mesuthel, who is of God. And Lamech, Powerful, well known for misusing the, these, he, the misusing the arms of his of, of arms his sons had invented. So I find that really really interesting because this is the lineage of Cain. 
Cain, the one that was cast out from the side of God. And, and you can see that uh, Methuselah and Methuselah were smitten by God and then Methuselah who is, who is of God. But then you come down to this Lamech character who's most, most interesting. So well known for misusing the arms his sons had invented. So Lamech had two wives. And the first wife had one son, uh, two sons, Jubal and Jubal. And then the second wife had Tubal, Cain and Namar. Now, Namar was a, was a daughter. Now, I've got these in green for a reason. It's most, most interesting what you'll see. So if we come into Genesis, the, 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 the end of Genesis 4, you can see that uh, we'll come down to it. And Lamech said unto his wives, Adar and Zillah, hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech, hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech, seventy and sevenfold. So we don't actually know. We don't actually know what he's gone and done. Um, but it seems fairly significant what he's gone and done. But the plot does stick it. The plot does stick it as you go through this. It's quite unbelievable. So if you have a look at the name, so I, I went and had a look at the, the son, so Jabal. So you have a look at Lamech, you go back to Lamech and the meaning of his name, and you go to the, the Jabal. It means stream of water, dwelling tents, and have as such as I have cattle. So he, that, that sounds fairly familiar, doesn't it? Like dwelling in tents and to have cattle. That, that to me, with what I've been reading, sounds like a good thing. Um, it's parallel language to sort of um, the Israelites, that they dwelled in tents and stream of water. That, that sounds like a good thing. And to have cattle like, you know, Job and Abraham, they had lots of cattle. So I don't know, that just seems good to me. But then you come to Jubal. So Jubal means stream. And he was the inventor of musical instruments, uh, the father of all to such as handle the harp and the organ. I've had a bit of more of a look at it, and it sounds like he was the one who invented music. He invented musical instruments. You come to Zalah, she means shade, an instructor of everything, craftsman in bronze and iron. Now, that, 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 that doesn't really go any further with her. So we come to Tubal Cain, and that means, and that means thou will be brought of Cain. And he was the instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And it seems to show origin to the Assyrian and per Persian, Persic races, which I assume means the Persian races. So that's, that's the first real sign we've got of, uh, apart from Cain, that's the first real sign we've got of some sort of physical like lineage to a land and what they might look like or anything like that. But if we go back, so, and, and, and um, Zalar had a daughter, Namar, which I will get to, Namar. So if we come to Adar, it means ornament, beauty. Now, one of the scriptures, further scriptures that it takes me to is Genesis 36, 2. So in Genesis 36, 2, we can see uh, Esau took one of his wives, the daughters of Canaan, Adar, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. And Udamana, the daughter of Adar, the daughter of Zebion, the Hivite. So this is where Esau started to entertain strange flesh. Now this Adar, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, that's the same name as this person in Genesis 4. It's most, most interesting, isn't it? But it gets better. It gets better. So if we go back to the spreadsheet, we can see Namar. So Namar means um, loveliness. And there's, there's a few scriptures, there's a couple of scriptures here in 1 Kings 14. So if we go to 1 Kings 14, 21 and 31, we see this. Now this is, the, this is Namar. So this is, so on the spreadsheet, it just went nowhere else apart from the women. The women, the, the, the two, the one, the, there's three women. So there's two wives and there's, and there's the daughter, Namar. So the, the first the first of the wives, she's got the, that name goes to one of Esau's wives, a Canaanite. And then you come to the daughter, Namar, and get your ears around this. So 1 Kings 14, 21, and Rabbaham, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. 
Rabaham was 41 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord did choose out of all of the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Namah, an Amatonite S. <sighs> boy, oh boy. So the, the plot thickens here because this is the last one begat of that side, of the side of Cain before the flood. And her name was Namah and she was the mother. She was the mother of this Rehoboam which was the king after Solomon. So she was one of Solomon's 700 wives and was the, was the, was the mother of this Rehoboam um, when he began to reign. And he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord did choose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. So it's most, it's most, most interesting. But if you keep going, you keep going, where else, where else do we find this word Amatonite S? So it's, it's the, the same Hebrew, Hebrew word, but it's, it's translated a little bit differently um, in these other scriptures, but it's the same word. So if we come now to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 2.20, we'll start at 19. And when thou comest nigh over against the children of Ammon, Distress them not, nor meddle with them, for I will not give, the, give thee of the land of the children of Ammon any possession, because I have given it unto the children of Lot for a possession. That also was accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt therein in old time. And the Ammonites call them, I'm never going to try and say that. So isn't this interesting? So the giants dwelt therein in old time time and we're talking about Nama who's an Amatonite S and she's one of the wives she's she's the wife well she's the mother one of one of the wives of, of, of Solomon and the mother of the king of Israel Whew. boy oh boy so where else do we see it Deuteronomy 23 3 I'll start I'll start at verse 2 Deuteronomy 23 2 a bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord even to his 10th generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. An Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their 10th generations shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. So he's fairly, he's fairly, I don't know, blunt. They're the Lord, isn't he? <laughs> he's, that's the law. So he's, he's issuing the law here and uh, he, uh, forever. And so Solomon's clearly transgressed in the law. And this, just to recap, is the name of this, whether this Namar is the last of the lineage of the side of Cain before the flood. And let's not forget Joshua 24, 3, where the Lord took Abraham from the other side of the flood. So it's all, there's something coming into me here, guys. There's something, there's something huge coming into me here from, from, from the Lord, eh? It's just, it's all, uh, words can't even begin to describe the stuff he's putting in. I just can't get them down because I've just got to go away and just keep concentrating and keep researching and, and I'll get it. I'll get it. But if you have a look, if oh, I'm determined, I won't stop. If, if you if you have a look at this word Amatonite S, which translates as well to Ammonite, you can see some of these other scriptures that we see here, um, and they and they're quite they're they're quite eye opening. So uh, if you come to First uh, Kings eleven five, um, well well First Kings eleven one will start at but King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, the women of the Moabites, Ammonites. Edomites, Zidonians, and the, and the Hittites. So this is where it all started to go awry for the children of Israel. And this woman, the Ma, is right amongst it. This is just this word, the Amatonite S, which is what she is in that verse that it, that it links to. That, that, that this verse in Genesis 4 links directly to in 1 Kings 14. It's just, and then you come to 1 Kings 11.5, for Solomon went after Ashtaroth. That's not good, is it? Ashtaroth, the goddess 
of the Zidonians and after Milcom, the abomination of the Amatonites. So it's most, most interesting. I, I, I've gone to all sorts of different places with this this morning. Um, and it, it come, it's, it's bringing me back to like Judges and the Holy Spirit's really leading me big time back to the book of Judges at the moment. Uh, because there's plenty of passing over and going to the other side and there's a scripture there somewhere where, where the Ammonites crossed over, passed over the River Jordan and the children of Israel were sore distressed and just got to keep reading the New Testament, get it done. And I mean, it's hard though, so the New Testament's bringing all this stuff in. I should get through Luke today. I'll be on to John. I hope tonight I'll be on to John tonight, into John tonight and tomorrow. Um, and then I'm just straight back to the Old Testament, eh? Because all this stuff, all this stuff's just coming in. It's just, it's blowing my mind. It's just blowing my mind what's happening at the moment. It's just like, you, you do a study of the word Adam in the New Testament and it, it, it show you where it takes you. It's just mind-boggling, mind-boggling. I can't do a video on it yet because I don't quite understand what I'm looking at yet. But once I do, once I do, I'll get it done. So if we go back to the spreadsheet, so that's just that that's just where that's taken me. So that just the the the, the name Namar. So you, you you got the you've got the the the, the first wife Adar. Uh, she gave birth to those two two boys, um, Jabal and Jubal. And one of them, one of them uh, meant a stream of water which dwelled in tents and such as have cattle. And the other one meant stream, just stream. And he was the inventor of musical instruments, father of all the harp and, and, and organ. You come back to the, to the father, Lamech. Lamech was powerful and well known for misusing the, 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 the arms of his sons had invented. So he's misused. So he's, the, 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 it doesn't say Jabal invented anything, but it says J, J, uh, Jabal, but it says Jabal and Tubalcain did. So I'd say with what I'm seeing is it means he misused the inventor of musical instruments um, and also the in brass and, and iron. So is this mixing iron and cl I don't know. I don't know, you know. And, and then and then the, the Adar, one of the wives is is the same name as one of the wives that that, that um, um, Esau took. And then the and then the the, the daughter Namar, who's the last one before the flood. She's just got all these links back to Solomon and the 700 wives and not having the law and people passing, the Ammonites passing over and they, they took Abraham from the other side of the flood. I tell you, man, there's something huge getting dropped into my temple hey, and I've just got to try and keep up with the Lord. And boy, oh boy, it's an exciting time to be alive. It's an exciting time to be in the body of Christ. I'll go over... Um, the other side as well. There's not much here. Um, a couple of things. So Abel, Abel meant a gentle breath to vanish in vanity. How about that, eh? How about that? And then you come to Seth. Seth means compensation. Makes sense. Who begat Enos, man. So he, he represented the whole human race, did Enos. Which also is interesting, isn't it? Because wasn't Cain and Cain's side a part of the human race? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? And then you go Canaan, which means possession. And then Mahalu, praise of God. Jared means descent. Enoch, God took home to heaven without dying. Mesuthla, man of the dart. Lamech, powerful. Noah, rest. So there's two things you've got Enoch. Sorry, I missed the word, I missed the meaning for Enoch. There, Enoch means dedicated. But you've got two, two things there. So you've got two Enochs. And you've got two Lamechs, and they've both got the same Hebrew name. So it's the same meaning, it's the same name, it's, good. it's, it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. So why it is not, it's not a coincidence that there's two of them. Now I look at these two sons. One of them was an inventor of something, of, of, of Lamech on, on Cain's side. One of them was the inventor of something that his father misused. And the other one seemed to be a good man who, who, who meant stream of water who dwelt in tents. It just feels like, it feels like Cain and Abel and Jacob and Esau are all over again to me. It's just how it feels, you know. And then you've got one Lamech on one side which used that power for no good. And then you've got Lamech on the other side who, who was powerful and he was, he was the father of Noah. And Noah meant rest and Noah was the, 
he saved all mankind in the flood. He was the one that the Lord saved. He was the one that the Lord chose to save all mankind in the flood. And then you've got Enoch on 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 Seth's side. He took he 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 was taken home by the Lord, and and Enoch on the other side met also met dedicated. But that that was the name of the city that Cain built uh, after he after the name name of the son Enoch. So it's most most interesting. It's and this is just the lineage that I've done. This is just the lineage that the I've creation done. Creation of Adam up until the flood, and there's the one. The, here's the here's the here's the one here of of um, of. It's still coming together. It's still coming together. This is the one of Shem. And it's just blowing my mind, and I just had a bit of a look, a bit of a spoiler for one coming up, should I say? Yes, I'll say. It would appear that the name Ham means Egypt. That's what I'm seeing at the moment. So it's most, most exciting because I prayed, and I actually put a comment there to someone the other day on one of my videos saying that, that I, I was starting to think that the Gentiles could have been Egypt. And I pray every day to the Lord, and I prayed on this specific thing. Please, Lord, please, 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 Lord, if I'm ever not in truth, tell me. And now I've come into this thing where it's saying that Ham is Egypt, and that's bringing me back to all sorts of scriptures that I've seen. There's one there in Psalms about Israel went to Egypt and the land of and Jacob went to the land of Ham or to to the like and it's just it's just taking me in all sorts of different react in, in different directions but but that's this one so there it is there, there's the pre-flood spreadsheet uh, unbelievable unbelievable where all this stuff's taken me and it's just it's 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 not coincidence it's not coincidence that Adar Adar one of the wives that begat Jubal and Jubal has the same has the same name as one of the wives of Esau, and it is not a coincidence that the Ma has the same name as as one of the wives of Solomon and and as the mother as one of the kings of Israel. It's not a coincidence. So I'll keep digging, I'll keep going, and I'll try and keep up with the videos as the Lord God puts these things into me, man. But my goodness gracious me. He's dropping something huge in here, and it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. Keep it coming, the Lord God of Israel. Please keep it coming to this humble servant, because all I want is the truth and just to glorify your name and to just put down on my little diary exactly what I'm finding in these studies that I'm doing. All right, my brothers and sisters, as usual, you please, if you feel led, you let me know what you think. Good or bad, agree or disagree, you, you let me know. Uh, but this is what I'm seeing, and this is the direction the Holy Spirit's taken me in. All right, my brothers and sisters, all power. Oh, my goodness gracious me. And all glory goes to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour, the King. And war and everyone got trampled